Directed by David Yates, Pain Hustler starring Emily Blunt, Chris Evan and Andy Garcia in the lead roles is finally out on Netflix. As the mockumentary releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to discuss the true story and real-life inspiration behind the film so that you can have the best viewing experience. A spoiler warning is in order as we'll be discussing essential plot points and character details from the film. But if you're done watching it already, let's dive straight into the video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. In Pain Hustlers, the pharmaceutical company called Zenna Therapeutics, but it's actually called Insys Therapeutics. The founder of the company was Dr. John Kapoor and the character Dr. Neil, played by Andy Gracia, is based on his character. The company produced a spray called Subsys, whose active ingredient was phenytoin, but in the movie the drug was called Lonafen. Chris Evans' character, CEO Pete Brenner, is modeled after Michael Babbage, who was CEO of Insys Therapeutics at the time of the scandal and worked closely with John Kapoor during the launch of Grants. It's safe to say that he worked very closely with John Kapoor, but many things about the character were changed in the film, and the creators took creative liberties to introduce a conflict in his life that was not present in real life. We don't know what kind of relationship Babbage had with Kapoor or how the events unfolded in the film. Emily Blunt's character isn't based on a specific person either, but it's safe to say she was inspired by Maria Guzman, the real-life whistleblower who exposed the scandal. Like Guzman, Blunt's character was a sales rep who was later promoted after closing a series of deals that helped the pharmaceutical company make a huge profit. We don't know if Guzman's character went through a similar dilemma, but it's safe to assume that there was a time in her life when she decided to go to court in order to expose the wrongdoings after finding her conscience. Brenner, Neil and Lisa Drake decided to bribe doctor to prescribe the drug and the strategy was true. In fact, Insys Therapeutics held many so-called speaker programs to increase the number of drug sales, increase brand awareness and use this opportunity to attract physicians. At the time, they were all aware of the drug's side effect but continued to organize it anyway. In Pain Hustlers, it is revealed that the company used the research of Elliot Hartigan, whose name is changed in the film but did not reveal any of it, only the parts that fit their strategy. In fact, Insys Pharma skipped an important part to get FDA approval. They hid the fact that the drug was given only to opioid-tolerant patients in clinical trials, so the probability of addiction was found to be less than 1%. It was also important to prescribe this drug to patients with advanced stage 4 cancer before addiction and abuse become a problem the patient usually died from the disease. Studies have shown that unless you have an incurable disease, the risk of overdose of poisoning is very high. But as seen in the film, it is clear that Insys Pharma hid the fact from doctors and authorities. It is true that after a while, Insys Pharma started asking doctors to prescribe the drug for all kinds of ailments. From mid-headaches to severe body pains caused by incurable diseases, they killed hundreds of people there and frowned upon them. John Kapoor apparently escaped prosecution, but as the film shows, authorities discovered his wire fraud and found him guilty under the RICO Act. As seen in the film, we don't know if he held the CEO accountable or not, but it's clear he would have done whatever it took to avoid charges. In addition to John Kapoor and Michael Babbage, the court eventually convicted five other employees, Alec Berlekoff, Richard Simon, Sunrise Lee, Joseph Robinson and Michael Gurry. In 2019, Insys Pharma filed for bankruptcy because it realized that there was no way out of this mess. They did their best to minimize the damage, even after their fraud and scheme became public knowledge. But eventually, thanks to the efforts of a few, the truth prevailed and the Justice Department made sure the perpetrators suffered the consequences of their actions. Pain Hustlers is a movie with a great cast and an interesting concept. But unfortunately, the poor story, very annoying characters and sloppy direction don't make it interesting. Director David Yates' direction felt sloppy and all over the place. The story feels pretentious and it quickly falls apart because the tone is all over the place. The characters are out of place and boring. The dialogue feels forced and the production costs are cheap and there are attempts at humor but each attempt quickly descends into insanity. The performances are honestly good. Chris, Ivan and Emily Blunt do their best but their acting doesn't save the film at all. This could have been an interesting movie but fails to do so and capture our interest entirely. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching the video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience watching The Pain Hustler on Netflix. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get weekly dose of cinemas and series. See you at the next one and for the time being, we are signing off. Goodbye and I'll be back.